Welcome back guys. Today we are taking a look at a few different 556 dedicated suppressors. And I know in the past I've told you that 556 dedicated suppressors aren't necessarily the way you should go. However, there are some good options out there that if you do go down that path, you may want to consider. So today we're going to be comparing and doing our new sound signature, which is going to be a little bit of a new profile that I'm going to talk to you about in a little bit on a few different cans. Mainly, today's video is focused on the AB suppressor Warthog A10. This is a basically fully welded can that's non-user user serviceable. It's a lightweight option that contains a 1.375 by 24 TPI thread adapter, which is that universal mount that's gonna allow you to use whatever current existing QD system you're familiar with or whatever muzzle devices you're already invested in, or just go with the direct thread half by 28 and you're good to go. But this is the I'm not going to say discounted, but this is the budget-friendly option that's offered by AB Suppressors because as I've said in some of my other videos, AB Suppressor really is what I consider to be the gold standard or the baseline standard when I'm talking about what I prefer in sound suppression. Now, what I prefer and what my viewers or you guys prefer may completely be a different ball game because when it comes to suppression ratings, it's going to be a little bit up to the individual. A lot of things come into play. One thing that people don't talk about a lot is going to be tone. And when it comes to the tone that I get out of AB suppressors, I really appreciate how it's both a mellow and a little bit of kind of like a bell dinging in the background. So you get that kind of that ping sound to it, but it's not a painful noise. When we compared that with something like the YHM Fat Cat, it's a lot, lot larger volume on the outside. So you get a little bit deeper of a tone. It's more bassy, which is gonna give a perceived lower decibel rating. But in reality, you're still about one to two decibels higher than something like the AB Suppressor Warthog A10. Then we have what is kind of just being thrown out there, but this is actually the 7.62 version, but Rugged makes their version of a 5.56 can that's duty rated, it's full auto rated, you can throw it at whatever. When it comes to can durability, I really do appreciate Rugged's just because they live up to the name Rugged and they have that unconditional lifetime warranty. But the 5.56 variant of this can is actually pretty fairly priced in what we're looking at in the options here today. And lastly, what we're going to be taking a look at, what I already have configured, and we're going to talk about this build here in a second, is the AB Raptor 6, which is the 556 variant six stack system. Now, I do run this with a reflex whenever I have it on a more exposed rail system or when I run it on my M4 kind of pencil build. But with this, of course, I got the hand gourd right to the barrel tip. So we've got to use just the flush mount, which it does come with. And it's going to also kind of give you a pretty cool picture of whether or not this sounds exactly like this. Now, a little bit of research that kind of came beforehand is this is a five stack it's got these, I don't know what they call them again, but it's, it's like a helical suppressor baffle. So it's basically swirling the air and breaking up laminar flow as it goes through there. But there's only five of them. Whereas with the Raptor 6, as the name implies, we have six. And this is a little bit more customizable, but again, at a much higher cost. So guys, what we're going to do now is actually break down our host build. And then we're going to start doing what the sound signature looks like. And we'll get right to the action to see what it sounds like in reality. All right, guys, so what we want to go ahead and do is take a look at the suppressor host because the suppressor host matters an entire lot whenever we're talking about the suppressor's capabilities. After all, you're not going to compare a suppressor rating from a 16-inch barrel to one like this, which is 11 and a half. So without getting into too, too much detail, I will mention a little bit about this incredibly what I call my Gucci build because while I do have a good bit of ARs or a good bit of weaponry, I actually didn't have a really nice custom that I did fully myself AR platform, and now I do. So we're going to go from tip to butt, just like Grand Thumb Style says, and start here. Now, this is the AB Raptor 6, which we've talked about a little bit in the previous, and this is kind of the base comparison that I wanted to do as, again, we call this the gold standard. So in comparisons for today, that's be where we we'll start. But in order to do our sound signature, it's a long thread, we're going to do just a bare muzzle so that we get an unsuppressed blast directly into the microphone, which we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Now, continuing down on the barrel side, we've got a Criterion Core 11 and a half inch barrel. This thing is the bees and knees when it comes to uh, sub MOA guarantee of accuracy, longevity of the barrel, and it is chrome lined and absolutely chef's kiss 
when you look down that barrel, but we're not going to do that right now. Now, as far as the handguard goes, we went ahead and went with the Geisley Mark 16. Uh, picked it up when it finally did their really good sales. So again, tried to make everything budget conscious while we're going Gucci. is a little bit more difficult than you think. We've got the Emissary Handbrake. This is the micro. Didn't want the full size because the full size is basically a vertical foregrip. In that case, this is not. Uh, this is just your hand stop and it actually performs really good for when you're doing a C grip. I put my pinky to the back. Didn't like it the day I got it, but after using it for a little while, I've really grown to like it. Now for the gas system, we've gone with a BCM. It's a 0.625 for the Criterion Core, CMMG, stainless steel gas tube. It's phosphate, phosphate coated, if I remember correctly. But the receiver set is something really cool and something people have asked me about on Reddit. They've asked me about it on Instagram and a couple different shorts on YouTube already, those that have noticed it. This is the Nictia System Santan Tactical Collab build. And the beautiful coloration on this is called Clear Anodized, not to be confused with Q's Clear Anodized. It is slightly different than that. But this is their proprietary Clear Anodization, and it is just a fantastic lower. The mags fall right out. We've got a flared mag well. It's fully ambidextrous. You've got oversized buttons, and I went ahead and outfitted it with Geisley Ultra takedown pins as well because they just match so dang good to this receiver set. But to continue on with the whole Gucci level, we did go ahead and throw on a Radian Talon 45 Ambi Selector. We gone ahead and put a Radian Raptor on the charging handle. And that BCG that you have inside is a Micro Best. Yes, Micro Best, if you don't know what that is, it's just basically the company that makes all the BCGs for those higher end companies like uh, Sons of Liberty Gunworks and things of that nature. They just rebrand the Micro Best and call them their high end stuff. And this one is the highest in Micro Best that was available. Uh, I don't remember all the specs, I'll put them in the description if anyone really wants to know. Continuing on, we've gone ahead and put a Reptilian one point, I believe it's 1.97 inch riser, which is high for some people, but you honestly get acclimated to it quite quickly. And when you're running night vision, this thing just lines perfectly up with your nods. Up on top, Primary, classic, primary Arms Classic Red Dot. It's a new offering from them, you should check it out. I like it personally, but you do get a little bit of double vision downrange through it, uh, so your mileage may vary. Going off to the back, we've got an AR pistol brace here, and our buffer tube for the day is a nickel boron. We can't forget about the trigger. Now, there are a lot of trigger options out there, and there are a lot of trigger snobs out there. Me personally, uh, I have learned that the LaRue Tactical is every bit of the guys lay at half the cost, except the LaRue Tactical price has gone up quite a bit these days. But this is the LaRue Tactical NVT2S in the flat trigger. It's got the two stage, we've got a little bit of wiggle, and then nice crisp break. Roughly about a four or four and a half pound pull. But these have been the best bang for the buck that I have found, and I do run some Geisley SSAEs on my other weapons. So that's the suppressor host. Now let's talk about the sound signature review that we're gonna be trying. <laughs> All right, guys, now let's talk about how I plan to start initializing reviews for suppressors in what I consider to be my sound signature for digital suppressor reviews. Now, we've gone ahead and purchased a very moderate to high end. It's, it's a higher end budget friendly shotgun mic that is rated for 130 decibels at its peak without any kind of crackling or anything to that nature. Now, what we have to do is we are going to be stationing the mic in front of the muzzle, not directly in front of the muzzle, obviously, because we'd be shooting the mic. We're gonna be at the muzzle we're gonna do it at what is considerably the shooter's ear, which is gonna be just next to where the BCG is. So we're gonna get two different looks. The first one is gonna be from approximately 18 inches away from the front of the muzzle. So when we have a suppressor, we'll scoot back just a little bit. Then we're going to be taking additional shots going from directly at the shooter's ear, which is gonna be approximately even with where the buffer tube actually meets up into your receiver. And we're gonna take shots in this way and again, take readings. Now, the first step of this is to be unsuppressed and have a baseline. Now, how that baseline works is that we have disabled any and all audio gains or gating features that are on any mic and digital controllers. This is an XLR phantom powered mic that goes into an actual XLR controller box that allows me to manually control every setting about how things are being gated or if it's got a low pass filter, 
we've disabled everything we can to ensure that the accuracy of the sound is as accurate as possible. But what we're doing is we're taking the unsuppressed blast and we're setting it to a threshold that's basically where it maxes out the mic's capability so that that is our upper limit. And then we leave the settings alone so that when you're in a whisper quiet environment, it actually reflects how much of a difference that is. But what that means is when we do a suppressor shot and we're still, again, in that same position at those same levels, you're going to effectively hear the dropout of what the suppressor does. Now, is it as loud as a real gunshot in real life? No. Is it as loud as a suppressed shot? No. It's just a normalized variation to help you understand exactly how much a suppressor is doing. Now, because of the way gunfire is captured and the way that mics work and the way that we perceive loudness and your audio system or your headphones or your speakers or your car system, wherever you're listening to this, might be a little bit different than everyone else's, your mileage may obviously vary. So don't come at me angry in the comments saying it was too low for my computer. Again, when we set the base, YouTube will actually go in and it sets a volume threshold for every video post facto and adds three decibels, six decibels, whatever they feel needs to be for the loudness comfort level. It's kind of like the broadcast standard. But all that's going to do is take our initial loud gun blast and it's either going to reduce the loudness level or it's going to increase the loudness level of that impulse where the rest of the video will still have that lower levels. So hopefully that helps you understand what we're doing and how we're planning to accomplish this and how to interpret the results yourself. Now, with all that being said and done, let's see how it goes. You know, I thought about putting EarPro on for that, but honestly, it wasn't that bad. If I was in a situation and I needed to just send it full send and not worry about getting EarPro on, and this was the suppressor I had attached to this gun, honestly, I think I'd be okay. All right, let's wrap it up and have some thoughts. All right, guys, so that takes a look at the AB suppressor Warthog A10. Now, again, this thing is designed for a couple things. It's designed to be lightweight and small, but it's also designed to be budget friendly for those who want to get into the AB suppress suppressor brand game. Because if you go down the Raptor 6, the Raptor 10s like I have at home, you know, those things start really adding up in cost. But coming in just over 500 bucks, and when you catch it on sale, I actually saw this for 350 bucks during the Black Friday events. That's a lot of value in a little bitty Canon package. It's full auto rated as we explored. The barrel restrictions is 10 and a half inch, so don't go any lower than that. But when it comes down to it, it performs pretty adamantly. I think in the sound test, you're going to see that maybe you can't tell, but I think it performs better than the T2 on the 10.5. It performed better than the AB Raptor 6, in my opinion. And when it comes to the Fat Cat comparison, the Fat Cat, while it has that deeper tone that I truly do enjoy, I feel like this Fat Cat is just a little bit louder than what I'm getting out of this. At the ear muzzle rating from AB is around 137 decibel. Compare that to the 168 decibel of a bare barrel, and that's a whole lot of reducing power. 
Of course, the hearing safe threshold is realistically closer to about 135 for permanent damage. So you're still just over that painful sensation where your tinnitus is gonna start bothering you when you get older. But for a lightweight, duty ready, budget friendly option, man, the Warthog A10 has a whole lot going for it. And the one thing I hadn't mentioned yet was the flash hider. Now, later on, we'll maybe do another video at night and show the flash hider's power, but it does have the flash hider end cap that's gonna reduce that muzzle flash just a little bit. Because if you're a follower of Grand Thumb, he'll tell you that suppressor use isn't just for your sound signature, but also your light pollution. Because when it comes to it, some suppressors do a better job of reducing that light signature as well as the sound signature. So from AB suppressor, the Warthog A10, it gets a letter of recommendation from me for whatever that's worth to you guys. But listen to the sound profiles, look up the ratings online for the decibel levels, compare it to your favorite can, and perhaps one day Jay from Pew Science will pick it up and do his interpretation of what this can can do. But till then guys, ask any questions, we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.